Hello and welcome everybody back to episode number two of Slash Tracks News. You guys have been begging for it, you've been asking for it, you've been writing Master Evil, you've been trying to get him to carve out a, a time for Josh and I to meet up, uh, a time where we're actually not watching you know, shitty horror movies or being forced to do things we don't want to do, like playing cards against humanity with people that live in our jail cells with us, uh, and we're not allowed to actually have any cards that would work for the scenario that's uh, put down before us on the table. So we just have dud cards the entire time <laughs> that we play that. So that's a lot of fun. How you been doing, Josh? You doing all right? It's nice to see you outside of the movies uh, that we have to watch. Oh, yeah. Doing good. Doing good. Got some new narrations out on the channel. Uh, keeping the the slasher audiobook audience happy in between episodes of Slash Tracks. Growing my gorgeous hair out, slicking it back, shellacking it. <laughs> Showing off my forehead. You look like uh, Negan, man. You're looking great. Oh, God damn. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, the so, wait, so before, <laughs> I was going to say, so just so the audience knows, uh, the next episode of Slash Tracks is going to be, what movie, Josh? A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Yeah, Freddy's Revenge. And hopefully Freddie doesn't find out that we're uh, going to be riffing <laughs> that film and try to possess one of our bodies uh, during the riff process, because that would end up bad for one of us. <laughs> which like... one of us would be Grady and which one of us would be Jesse? He's inside of me. Um... Dad, open the door. Open the door. <laughs> open the door. <clears throat> Damn it. Open the door. And don't worry, kiddies. We're ready to walk that fine line. We'll keep it. Freddy's nice. Revenge has <laughs> one of the worst scenes in a Nightmare on Elm Street uh, franchise to me, where he shows up to the pool party and he just starts murdering everybody at the pool party. And it's like, there's like 50 of them. They yeah, can just absolutely. <laughs> yeah, just tackle him. Hold him down. Beat the shit out of him. Robert England's only like 5'8 in real life. I mean, he's got he's got like uh, powers and stuff too, I guess, because all the fire that's erupting everywhere. I, I don't know. I don't know. None of it. None of that movie makes sense, and I. It doesn't follow any of the rules of one, three, four, five, six, set whatever. Well, at it's the just, time, there was no three, four, five, and six, and people apparently didn't care because it did really well at the box office, but. Uh, I'm I'm just listen I'm you I'm telling you that they <laughs> the director of that movie um he's he what's his name Jack Shoulder was he the one who directed it I'm pretty sure that's his name okay yeah, so he, watched the Screen Queen documentary it was really good really good yeah Jack Shoulder like uh New Line kind of just in their haste to put out a, a sequel as quickly as they could. You know, Wes Craven was like, no, I'm, I'm done with that character. You know, I told my story, whatever. And then uh, New Line's like, no, we're going to get a sequel out or whatever. So they just rushed everything. They just kind of wrote whatever. I think the guy who actually wrote the screenplay was like a little known, little used guy who worked for New Line. Like he was he wasn't even a, a screenwriter, I don't think. Yeah. Right. So you and I had a better chance of right. If we happened to be making coffee for people at New Line Cinema at the time, we could have had a shot to write that film. Uh, we got to be careful ripping this one because uh, a, a deleted comment from the last episode, the Hellraiser episode. I didn't mm. get to. Show, I wanted to share this with you live to get your live reaction. Somebody said, "This is not an homage to Mystery Science Theater." Two incels making dick jokes and picking on a stripper is uh, is not fans of Mystery Science Theater, and <laughs> so apparently. People, this guy wanted us to do PG riffing on a R-rated film, uh, but uh, yeah, so we're incels. We have no significant others. We just brag about having, you know, wife and a girlfriend, and it's okay. all believe. But yeah, uh, got that comment. Um, so apparently, dick jokes, which the movie made themselves, by the way, not us. We just use their joke continuously. And uh, I want to take this moment to apologize to the stripper character from Hellraiser Revelations. Uh, we were very unfair to you. Very unfair to you. 
Uh, you're a lovely lady, lovely, lovely stripper, probably a hooker too, but that's okay. Oldest profession. You, you you're, earn that money. You're, so, so you're assuming by apologizing to her right now on Slash Tracks News, you're assuming that she has enough of, enough of a career that generates money that she's able to afford internet to see this episode. No, based not on, her. Not her. The guy that left the comment that got so insulted because we made dick jokes and picked on a stripper character. Uh, during our riff, um, he, maybe he's married to a stripper or something, and he just like takes uh, umbrage with that and like particular offense to that. Well, because... and, and he has no dick, so you know, dick jokes uh, hit him below the belt. Well, he, if he doesn't have a dick or a small dick, he must drive a huge truck or have a motorcycle, and he must be from my hometown of North Bend, Coos Bay, Oregon, because anybody that was, you know, anybody in my town, or at least they thought they were, had a gigantic truck with a huge <laughs> chopped muffler. And uh, I always tell people, I'm like, man, that guy, probably, if they have a big truck, it's like, man, that guy's probably got a really small dick. <laughs> hey. Because they're compensating. Exactly. And just so people know, Slash Tracks is an homage to Mystery Science Theater, but it is for usually R-rated horror films so the riffs are going to be r-rated too uh that's just the way it is so if you don't if you can't handle a little uh dick joke here and there uh maybe it's not for you well you know maybe that particular episode wasn't for him but let's not let's not just cut him off completely josh because viewers are viewers and if we ever do care bears the movie or if we ever do milo and otis welcome back come on back we're sorry come on back We'll do Disney's made-for-TV movie from, like, 1995, Step Monster. You know? Remember that one? We'll do that uh, one. Vaguely. I also remember um, Luck of the Irish on the Disney Channel, where the kid from Final Destination uh, 9 uh, is in it. He's playing <laughs> the main character that plays basketball. There was also a Disney movie we could uh, riff called Grind, uh, where they're a bunch of aggressive inline skaters. They're rollerbladers. Or is that called Brink? Was it Brink? I don't know. I don't know. It was we Brink. Did an Ernest movie. It was, Brink. it was Brink. And there was also Alley Cat Strike, which was a group of ragtag bullers uh, getting together to compete for the championship or whatever. But we could riff those, I think. We could also riff Xenon. Xenon, uh, wasn't she like a like a singer, like in the 21st century, like on a space station or something? We'll do, we'll do some uh, kid stuff for, for that viewer. Uh, just yeah. to make them happy. We'll make well, SpongeBob jokes. Save his information, and we will do an episode just for him. We'll do a completely clean riff. So what? So what do we got in the news cycle tonight? We got the. We're fired up now. I'm fired up. I'm pissed <laughs> off. And, I'm, and on that note, let's get into some fun facts. Episode two, fun facts slash tracks news. Let's get into the business. Let's get our dicks wet. <laughs> let's, that's the that's the joke that that. Threw him away, by the way. That's what that's what did it to him. So, so instead of dipping our toes into the water, we're gonna dip the tip of our dicks into the water for this. <laughs> okay. We just we just lost that. He, he's like, I don't like slash tracks, but I'm gonna watch the podcast. And yeah. now he's, just, and he's like, Oh, never mind, never mind. Six minutes in, we lost him again. Yeah. All right. So what do we got? All right. Some some Irish clubs will actually hand out free lollipops at the end of the night to keep patrons quiet as they leave. So this is a tactic they use. So if people are pissed off, the clubs, the good time's over. It's time to leave. It's time to go home. It's 2 a.m. Th- these clubs and uh, these Irish club- clubs will hand out lollipops to to calm down the rowdy uh, patrons as they leave. Did that work for you and your former co-host when the good times were over? <laughs> oh, when the show ended, I was like, hey, um, the pot, it was a great last two years has been really fun, but uh, I'm going to have to end things with you. Here's a lollipop. It was called good times. Everybody. If you're wondering what my joke means, it was good. Here's time. a lollipop. Yeah. No, that yeah. that's interesting. That's yeah. Okay. So they well, really the give guy, them, they give them lollies on the way out. Well, the, there was, you know, and I, I, the first thought I had was like, well, if there was somebody that was like really pissed off that the party was over, I wonder if they're like, we better give that guy two lollipops. <laughs> He looks pissed. <laughs> we better hope that it's one of those Tootsie Pops where it has the Native American shooting that uh, it has a star and he's shooting an arrow. Free- yeah, you get a free one. But I don't remember ever cashing in one of those ever. Do you remember anyone honoring that to you? I did. I, I, I used to cash those in at a store locally as a kid and they did it. 
Okay. You, I think I, in retrospect, they just thought I was a cute kid and gave me a sucker, but you know, I gave him the wrapper for it. So <laughs> they're like, great. Thanks kid. <laughs> um, thanks for this, lo- this lollipop wrapper that has absolutely no value. I wonder if they have to sit, like if it was a real thing, do they have to just like hold on to those and like send them back to the Tootsie company or whatever? How does that work? That, they just, that bo- like, hey, thanks, kid. And then they just, you know, take a dime or something out of the, you know, give a penny, take a penny. Yeah, penny. exactly. By the way, Alex, I was at a store the other day and <clears throat> my, I bought a couple things. It came to like $2 and 10 cents. And there happened to be like a quarter, a nickel, a dime and a bunch of pennies. And then they give a penny, take a penny. So I pulled out $2, set it on the counter. And I reached over and took the dime out and put it with the $2. And the guy gives me the biggest go to hell look and was like, okay. Like he's all pissed that I used the dime. Right. You know? <laughs> so I go back the next day cause I'm, I'm, it's on my route and I just stop in and I take a quarter in and um, made sure it was the same guy. And I, I put the quarter in and I was like, now I'm good for 15 cents next time, and I won't ruin your day. And what did he say? He said, okay. And that was honestly his response. Well, I think that's all he knows how to say. Dude, you probably – yeah, it's just, he's like a parrot. That's like the only phrase he learned. Um, he's he like offended. rude. He was literally offended that I used – I took a dime out. So. Well, he's working at this convenience store, Josh. He's probably, he probably was eyeballing that dime all day, hoping no one would take it so he could add to his daily wages, and you screwed everything up for him. So that's like uh, when you see some bottles or something in the parking lot, and you're like, well, somebody's like watching. I don't want them to see me pick that up, but when I come back, I'm going to pick it up. And then, you know, you're walking out and some asshole picks the bottle up before you can get it. That's probably I'm his. Asshole. Yeah, that I see. I am that asshole. I do the same thing, too. We are that asshole. Um, all right. Enough with uh, Tootsie Pop redemptions and uh, bottles. Uh, let's get into fun fact number two. Okay. Now, this one slash tracks slash tracks uh, commenter on YouTube would not like this. If you hadn't checked out before, he's checking out on this one. <laughs> The fastest speed of, ejacul- of ejaculation ever recorded was 42.7 miles per hour. So that's the fastest that anyone's ever blown a load on record. Wow. I don't even know how to respond to that one or what to say. Um, did they call Guinness for that? Uh, how was this? I don't know who, who, I don't know who like, qualified it or who was actually there to like, make sure it was a real record. Um, I just envisioned some guy, <laughs> some guy standing right next to the tip of the penis with like a stopwatch, <laughs> and, like, refer- like in a referee shirt, you know. Yeah, like- and he's got a whistle, and uh, and he like as soon as the load comes out, he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's got the, you know, the the thing that measures how fast somebody's throwing the baseball, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's, got a cop uh, with the radar gun uh, next to him. There's scouts behind a chain link fence watching this. They're like, man, this guy is going to go places. He's got major velocity on that load. He just blew right there. We may have to draft him. <laughs> um, I was going to say, if so that's the record, 42.7 miles per hour. Fastest load ever recorded, right? Well, what about all the, what about all the really fast loads that haven't been recorded? There are just sperm blowing superstars all over the place that just haven't had the chance to hit the big stage or to be noticed, right? There's a bunch of heroes out there. That's just the fastest load blown recorded, Josh. That's not, that doesn't mean that's at the actual record. You might be the champion. If there was a competition for blowing load, wait, yeah. there, oh, wait, 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 we call that politics. Never mind. We've already got that. <laughs> the competition yeah and if you do really well uh you'll be elected for four years and uh you can lead an entire country <laughs> but you don't blow the load through your penis you blow it through your mouth um and the youtube slash tracks guys checked out again he has left sometimes yeah. and sometimes in the mouth okay but uh hush money takes care of that all right Dude, he might. He's there's there's rumblings that he might run for office again. Josh, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> we all know how much you love 
former president Donald Trump. <laughs> well, it's like it's okay. Take the politics out of it. The guy's ego is literally killing our country. You know, it could literally kill democracy because all these other people in the party with him are afraid to piss him off. Like in secret, they're like, "God, I wish he would die." Something. I wish. I wish he'd go away. I wish he'd go away. Cameras turn on. I support him a hundred percent. You know, they don't really believe that it's, it's a bruised ego. He's been like this his whole life. If he loses, somebody cheated. You know, if, 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 uh, if uh, one of his businesses gets shut down, it was a witch hunt. The IRS was out to get him. You know, I bet in school, you know, kids got kicked out of the school because they beat him in the spelling bee or something, you know, because uh, he was trying to spell bigly. And Dude, uh, he could have been a, like he really missed his calling as a wrestling heel. He could have been, he's the ultimate natural heel. Like he's been in wrestling, the hair versus hair match. Yeah. Uh, Trump, Trump, Pla- uh, Trump Plaza and casino hosted WrestleMania four and five. Yeah. Um, but like he missed his calling as just being an, an, a talent on screen as just like a heel manager. He would have been great <laughs> just yeah. himself. You know, it's not I just take the politics out and, you know, you lose some, you win some. When you lose, you you move on and do what's best for everybody else. And you try again if you want to. But like all he's doing is complaining about the same thing that's been disproven in like over 60 court cases. Like all this proof is coming out that they were like trying to um have fake electors or something like there's it's just it's just every day there's more bullshit and it's like dude you're not helping the country you're hurting it and i just want my kids to grow up in a country that's as fucked up as the one i grew up in and not more fucked up than that you know that, so, and that's the dream right there yeah you just want to keep it just at a there's a certain levels of crazy that we can tolerate right josh you just want to keep that. it at that that level it, yeah, just, like it, just seems, it just seems like all this has to do with is a man child's broken ego and his refusal to accept that he's going to lose sometimes and that's sad that people have died for that you know and that that's my problem with him nothing to do with politics it has to do with be a man admit you lost and and quit getting people killed um didn't mean to get all serious, but yeah, that's well, what I have a problem with him. I was just going to say that uh, I don't think that he should be even in consideration to be president again, especially after the march. Like, the, they stormed the Capitol. Yeah, uh, and, and also... That's it. End of story. Apparently, he took like 15 boxes of presidential documents to Mar-a-Lago with him, and a bunch of the stuff that he fought to them for the, for the committee to not get their hands on, they, when they got it, it had been ripped up and retaped back together by archivists. And apparently that's that's something that also disqualifies you from office and can get you prison time. There's a presidential document act, and they're looking into that now because he actually stole documents from the White House and tried to keep them in Mar-a-Lago. Um, so, yeah, he, he shouldn't run again, in my opinion. But who the fuck am I? I just don't like the guy. I think he's got a sore sore man baby ego and yeah. uh, i don't want somebody like that with the nuclear codes you know i was just gonna say that man had the key the nuclear codes he had the keys to the nuclear weapons and he know he's like one of the only people in the united states that knows for sure if aliens exist now <laughs> he, he exactly. knows that Answer. and imagine imagine that guy that you just said with the with the ego who's obviously a sociopath that wants to get revenge on half the country. Imagine him being in office again and not having to worry about re-election. That's what scares the shit out of me. But I think enough people, you know, turned out last time to, to stop him from winning. And I think that even more would stop him next time. Yeah, I'm I'm happy Trump's not in office again, but I'm also not stoked that Biden's in office. I think yeah, he's I, Trump I, too. Politicians are all shitty, man. There's not a good politician out there. But I just want one that's like a talking head, you know, just somebody in there, like when Bush was in there, or Obama, I never even thought about politics, you know? Yeah, because uh, they were like, it's like, hey, he's the president. He's doing his job. Like, yeah, things just, are getting whatever. done. I'm not worried about it. Oh, these people don't like him, whatever. But whenever you got a guy in there that has a fucking cult 
that people are literally in a cult for this guy and worship this guy. There's televangelists that pray to him on national TV, and I'll send you the videos. I'm not even bullshitting you. Multi-millionaire televangelists praying to him and treating him like Jesus. That's when I've got to step in and have an opinion and be like, yeah, this guy does not need to be there. Well, that uh, doesn't. He's setting us back decades, and there's so that much more hate. Hey, <clears throat> that doesn't surprise me. Most televangelists are full of shit, and all they want is money uh, oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So that, I'm not impressed by them, and I, that doesn't. That kind of behavior wouldn't surprise me. They're all dirtbags too. Anytime I, just, I, yeah, I just don't um, like hate that's spreading. You know, anytime I listen to motivational stuff when I work out, and Joel Olstein pops up, I immediately skip it. <laughs> I don't want to hear his crap. I don't want to hear your bullshit. <laughs> Rock a sock a lock a sock. I just don't. I just don't want to listen to somebody who's claiming to be a man of God, and when they had the hurricane, he wouldn't even let these poor people that are homeless or their houses just got destroyed. He wouldn't let them into their church. It's documented. Joel Olstein, just world class dirtbag. Exactly. They all these dirtbags deserve each other, man. Yeah, and I well, just I, like I said, it's to me. It's this this cult like mentality behind Trump is like spreading hate and it's setting us back decades. And I just it just scares me. These people that are ready to take up arms against other people just over different ideologies. And it's, you know, we're supposed to disagree, but it doesn't have to come down to like a civil war type thing. <clears throat> and that's what Trump would want just because of his ego. If he can't have what he wants, he'll use his power and position to destroy a, to destroy the country because he don't care. All he cares about is himself. And well, I have a – since we were talking about Trump, I have a perfect segue for the next fun fact. Okay, fun fact. Let's get back right. to fun facts. Well, this is a, that's a perfect segue. We were talking about Trump. Now we're going to go right into this one because they're closely linked. Oh, uh, pigs, pigs can be trained to play video games. Wow. Yeah. Good segue. Good segue. Yeah, because, you know, pigs, Trump, you know. <laughs> I think I've seen him play a video game a couple times. Well, uh, you know, these pigs can be trained to play video games. Do you know what they're called? The pigs are called? What's that? They're called teenagers. Uh, eh? uh, eh? uh, I thought you were about to make a cop joke there for a second. No, no, yeah. because when you're, you know. <laughs> When you're in high school, or whatever you're playing video games, you leave your rappers and shit all over the house. Then your mom, your, our dad's at work; they got to pick up after you. You've just been playing, you know, Resident Evil all day or Madden or whatever the hell you're doing, and uh, you're you're a dirty little pig. Every every kid in high school leaves their shit all over the place, just making a mess. They're a pig. <laughs> it's, it's not really a fun fact. It's just obvious, you know. So Teenage. real pigs can't play video games. Damn it! No, just... they can, no, they can. Real pigs can play video. That's the that's the fun fact. It's the truth. I don't know how they play though. Would they play with their snout? Because they motion. have hooks, right? Yeah, maybe motion control games. Maybe they play Wii. They play Wii. <laughs> yeah, they play Wii. They're, they're really good at Wii tennis. <laughs> <laughs> they're the only ones that can actually use the power glove correctly. <laughs> Power Glove is just the biggest shitter of all time. Uh, if you don't know about the Nintendo Power Glove, didn't work. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, also, let's get into fun fact number four. Okay. Oh, I got a fun fact for you. Okay. <clears throat> Before we get into just one last Donald Trump thing, I even got a clip here I can play. He he has a beautiful singing voice. Did you know that? No. Here, roll it. What? Oh, shit, I couldn't get the rights to, to play a clip from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but I was going to play him performing the Oompa Loompa song, and I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Check out check out Donald Trump as Oompa Loompa number four in the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Beautiful wow. song of voice. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. The songbird of our generation, actually. Uh, in 1986... 12 prospective members of a Florida jury got stuck in a courthouse elevator for 20 minutes. Now, Josh, ironically, the jurors were hearing a case against the Otis Elevator Company, the very same company in charge of maintaining the very elevator that they got stuck in. All right, I got I to know how this one turned out. How did it turn out? 
I don't know how it turned out. It's just a fun fact I saw. <laughs> I don't know how it turned out. But I, it, at that but moment, tidbits. you have to, uh, like, if that's the case, I don't know how they couldn't be impartial. I don't know how they could be impartial because they'd be exactly. pissed, right? Uh, uh, the irony there is just massive. You know? <laughs> Alanis Morissette could have learned something about irony from that situation because her song is more of an inconvenient. Isn't it inconvenient, don't you think? But this yeah, is yeah, yeah. Irony. this is real irony right here. That's because it's not only is it they got stuck in an elevator while they're trying to hear a case about you know malfeasance or whatever about an elevator company. It's the exact elevator company. Exactly. That's um, for you. I got the last fun fact of the uh, the night right here. Now this could come in handy. Uh, it is cold and flu season right now. Okay. Sex can actually help unblock a stuffy nose. I can believe that. Yeah. Believe that. Well, it I also can... helps unblock a, a stuffy dick, too. <laughs> yeah, it can give you the world record in blowing a load. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so if you're going to, I'm telling you, man, uh, if you're trying to set the record for having, you know, ejaculation, you know, speed records, might want to have a stuffy nose at the same time. Could help. Get the guy, Josh. I think we've missed our calling. We should we should be the people that judge these world records. Uh, be an interesting life, man. It doesn't mean one thing or the other. Just we, we want we want to maintain uh, integrity. integrity. Yeah, integrity of the game. We want to make sure the records are are correct. We don't want any funny business. Okay, and we'll be the guys who maintain uh, a lawful environment when these records being set. Just something to look into. I don't know. Maybe a side hustle. I don't know. Yeah, it's, and, and it's not really a hands-on job. No, so we, that's a good thing too. We're not. You're not going to have to be giving the guy a hand job to help. It. He's. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it's not a hands-on job. You know. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. more. Of a, you know. It's. It's. And you're not going to have a boss that's all up in your face or anything. Well, hopefully not. Ho- hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, if you get too close with that stopwatch, it could it could get in your face. It could spider web all over that beautiful hair you got on top of your head. <laughs> you could end up with a big caseload in your lap, uh, you know, more often than you than you would want. That, that's a possibility on that job. That would be a tough that would be a tough one. It's like regardless of how much you got paid or how much, you know, you, you valued integrity and, and keeping the rules and stuff. Someone accidentally blows a load in your face on the job. You might be wanting to look into. You might be going to go into Craigslist to see if there's any other jobs available. Now, even with all the the hard aspects of that job, I think that job could at times be really, really, really hard. Yeah, and be a really back and forth business. But I think in the end, I think in the end, we would pull it off. I really do. I think. I think we. I think we could pull it off. Well, one, I'll tell you one thing. That okay, we'd end with to a, keep a straight face. Dude, I think we'd end with a bang, see, regardless of what see. happened. You know what I mean? Spank <laughs> uh, bank. You'd be able to rip a beat to that sucker, I'm telling you. Uh, check this out. Let's get into uh, some horror news. Okay. Horror right. news. I like horror news. Horror news. And we're not talking about record setting uh numbers here we're talking about actual horror like the the genre oh horror okay yeah yeah so scream the movie that you said you didn't want to see uh has made 120.4 million dollars to date on a 24 million dollar budget now that's that's a huge success uh no matter how you slice it that is a huge success um Scream 6 has actually already been uh, greenlit and announced, so it's in pre-production. They're going to make a Scream 6, uh, I think, very soon. Probably in the next year is what I read. Um, the best character won't be in it, so... what? Spoiler alert. I just said the best character. All right, it's all right. Anybody's going to know I'm talking about do uh, with, with the success of Scream 5, okay... And the success of the the first two Halloween movies, Halloween, you know, Kills and Halloween, you know, whatever, Halloween 2018 or whenever the hell that came out. What what dormant horror franchise, Josh, would you like to see get a new installment? And you're in your Leprechaun. Le, Le, Leprechaun, really? No, no, uh, I think it's time for a 
Jason or Freddy movie, but no more remakes or anything like a continuation of the original ones, like the other ones have done. Yeah, maybe maybe make a follow up to Jason Lives, like just kind of forget everything that happened after it, and have a rematch between Tommy and Jason. I think that would be cool. Or you know, go back to part four. And, you know, redo the whole Jason resurrection thing and have uh, Corey come back and play Tommy in a uh, battle. Um, I, I like the I like where you're going with the Friday the 13th going back and kind of forgetting where some of those movies went with the <laughs> franchise. I think in that same vein, I would love to see a Nightmare on Elm Street that takes that takes off or takes you know takes starts whatever you know begins after the events of the first Nightmare on Elm Street, but like set like twenty to thirty years later, and Heather Langenkamp is Nancy today, and she's kind of been in the same vein like preparing and kind of prepping for Freddy to kind of reemerge at some point, and she's like ready, like in present day to take on. Freddy Krueger one last time. And Freddy's all weak and shit because she turned her, her back on him. He's older. I think, I think that Freddy could, uh, you know, Robert England could pull it off too because stunt double CGI. I mean, look what they did with Harold Ramis in Ghostbusters Afterlife. And he's not, yeah. even, you know, that was great. Uh, I think they, I think they could, I think Robert could do the role again with limited, uh, you know, stunt stuff going on with him. I think they could use him for the talking and the facial stuff, and they could use uh, doubles and CG uh, to fill in the rest if he really wanted to come back to the role. But that's the only way that would work. You know, I would love to see Kane Hodder, you know, be Jason in a Jason versus Tommy uh, sequel. I, I, who else would they really, could they really do to, to revive the original Friday the 13th series if not the character of Tommy? You know? Yeah, well, that uh, Lar, Lar Park Lincoln could come back from a new blood. She played Tina. They could, I know that they made a fan film. They made a, it's on YouTube right now. I can't remember what the name of it is, but they actually brought her back uh, to like be in a sequel to that. It's on you. Like, I don't know what, but we'll, we'll, we'll put the name of the movie in the, in the description yeah, for the episode. There's Voorhees, there's Vengeance. Yeah. Uh, but they, blood. His they name can bring her back to uh, have some unfinished business with, uh, with Kane Hodder. Uh, what you were saying, if they brought back Kane Hodder for um, like a sequel to Jason Lives, my only problem with that is Tom McLaughlin would obviously want to be the director and he would be the guy they'd probably go to for that if and they were going to go down and he'd want CJ Graham. Yeah. Um, and I just, CJ's fine. He's just, I feel like he's a poor man's Kane Hodder. It's this, it's, I know that CJ was before Kane, but Kane took what CJ had established in Jason Lives and just took it to a whole nother level. It's like, okay, you went here, well, I'm going here and there and everywhere, and I'm take I'm making this character my own thing, and yeah. it worked. And I've talked to CJ before, and he was he mentioned you know uh, being a bit old to get back behind the mask and stuff, but he said he would do it. So I mean that option would be on the table, and you know maybe. Maybe they could both take the role. I mean, different different shots and stuff. I don't know. That would be kind of cool. I just, like, if they do another Friday the 13th, I would like them to, like, it, I, just continue the continuity after Freddy versus Jason. Just Continuity. Just, continuity. The continuity. Let's see what happens after that film, uh, because Jason X hasn't happened yet. So you have all that build up and whatever's going on. You could you could literally take that and go anywhere you want with it. And you could do the same thing with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street because obviously Freddy can't physically die. And now all of the kids in Elm Street remember him again because he's been raising hell throughout that whole film. Uh, even though in Freddy vs. Jason, it's just absolutely sacrilegious that Freddy killed one person in the entire film. But my favorite character in that movie, by the way, he killed oh. Mark, right? Didn't he yeah. kill the? Yeah, killed Mark. My favorite character, the guy whose sole job in the film was to dump exposition and plot, <laughs> but he did a great job. Nobody else could have did that role. Why don't we get Bruce Campbell and Robert England to get off their butts and let's just do Freddy versus Jason versus Ash and get it over with? 
Uh, Bruce, that's for, Bruce Campbell has already poo pooed on that. He's like, he's like, I retired uh, Ash, but like three weeks later, he was doing the Evil Dead video game yeah, <laughs> as Ash. He, he retired Ash before he did Evil Dead versus, uh, you know, Ash versus Evil Dead, the TV show. Yeah. He retired Ash. So I never believe that. I think that's just to, you know, get people talking. Um, I just realized the shape when I crease my forehead kind of looks like the Blair Witch little wooden things. That's freaking me out when I see that. Um, <laughs> you were talking about movies that did good. Yeah. Ghostbusters Afterlife, during COVID, on a budget of $74 million, brought in $200 million at the box office, plus the top-selling digital uh, movie and physical disc uh, when it was released. Uh, it made more money than the 2016 um, remake did, uh, as far as profit. That one made 216 on like a 150 million dollar budget. Uh, so it looks like we're going to get more Ghostbusters. Uh, Jason signed a deal with Sony, and they're going to pump out more Ghostbuster films. And Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Bill Murray all have interest in reprising their roles in any sequels. Yeah. Ernie Ernie Hudson wants to be like a main character and be like a kind of a trainer for the younger Ghostbusters. Be a you know uh, have Winston be there you know as the trainer. So that would be kind of cool. Uh, he never got he never really got his due in the originals. He wasn't even on the poster for the first movie. Uh, yeah, the, that that character. and Winston was one of my uh, favorite characters because yeah. he was he was basically like the everyman, and it was like the role. Where it's like, as a kid, it's like, okay, well, I'm not like a brilliant scientist. I'm not a, a brilliant uh, psychiatrist or any of these characters. I can't really relate to the other three. But he's just the guy who answered a, a job listing in the want ads. Like, that's me. That could have been me. That, yeah, I always loved Winston. I, I hate the fact that he, 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 uh, he auditioned for the cartoon to do the voice of Winston. And they didn't pick him. They went with Arsenio Hall. Uh, it's like you had one of the original Ghostbusters want to voice his character. No, nope, no, nope, it's not. That's not Winston for uh, for the cartoon. Yeah, so. we don't. We just we don't. That's not. We don't envision Winston as Winston for this role. <laughs> Bill Murray got the original <clears throat> Peter from the real Ghostbusters fired uh, because he said he didn't want uh, Peter Bankman sounding like Garfield because the guy voiced Garfield. Yeah, and ironically. They replaced him. Well, this part isn't ironic. They isn't it ironic? They replaced him with Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier voiced Peter after that, which is tied to Alanis Morissette, and isn't it ironic? But no, the ironic part is Bill Murray got the voice of Peter fired. Uh, uh, Lorenzo Music, I think, was his name, uh, who voiced Garfield, and then later on, Bill Murray goes on to voice Garfield in two movies. Yeah, uh, think okay. of that. There's a fun fact for you. Yeah, Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties uh, is tonight's Slash Tracks News shitter of the week, by the way. That movie, I, I, I want my 375 back. So I, I want to see Clifford. Mr. Feeney's in it. So you know. Does Feeney know he's in the movie? Because he, he looks like he's having a rough time lately. Does he know where he is, Josh? <laughs> what's his name? William, what, what is his, what's his full name? William Daniels. Yeah, William Daniels. He's not looking so great, Josh. <laughs> he what is he? Ninety seven years old. He's the only teacher in the history of the world that followed his sixth graders to junior high and then followed them to high school and then followed them to college. If you're that, listening to this, I'm giving a very evil look to to Alex for putting down Mr. Finney right now. Borderline stalking, pal. That is stalking. There, yeah. there's a, there's a cartoon clip thing that shows him getting arrested for stalking uh, Corey. <laughs> for stalking Corey, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, well, he's I, a very nice guy. He's a very nice guy. I'm not saying he's not. I've seen some of his cameos. He, like, borderline is in full character as Feeney in those cameos. Do you notice that? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there was something I wanted to bring up tonight. I don't know if this is a good time or not, but it's kind of a somber note. Um a guy who resonated with me, and this I'm being totally serious, no comedy here. A guy whose music resonated with me more than anything. The very first vehicle I owned, the first tape I bought for it was Bad Out of Hell. Um, it really, really hit me hard that we lost Meatloaf 
Uh, he's my favorite singer of all time. His music has always resonated with me, and I've always felt like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a connection, a uh, spiritual connection with the guy. <clears throat> I didn't agree with his politics, like some of his political views and stuff, but. Uh, he was an anti vaxxer, wasn't he? He didn't believe yeah, he wanted the COVID yeah. vax- vaccine. And uh, that's what ended up uh, doing him in pretty much. But in the end, he was in a lot of pain. Uh, he had a lot of back problems, and you know, it, it, it just re- it really shook me that we lost him. And uh, yeah, Meatloaf, I love Meatloaf. Uh, that's a voice that the world is never going to forget. You know, it was just such a powerful voice, and I think it's going to live on. And uh, we didn't deserve him. He, he was he was he was an amazing singer, so much talent. And I'm an amazing person. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, yeah. Well, on that same note, since we're talking about sad stuff real quick, I just want to give a quick shout out to Louie Anderson. Uh, Yes, Louie too. When I was a kid, Life with Louie was one of my absolute favorite cartoons. Um, It was must watch along with Bobby's World and, you know, all the other shows that came on Fox at that point. But I just remember really enjoying that show. And uh, my mom and I would watch it together and we would do impersonations of his voice and stuff. And uh, Louis was he his talent would just like absolutely leap off the screen. He was in Coming to America for probably I bet you he was on screen for like two minutes in that entire film. And I remember both scenes he was in i remember all of his lines he's like yeah and if things go well I'll, you know one day you know i'm mopping the floors and now i'm on the grill and if yeah. things go well you know then i'll be a fries and that's when the big bucks start rolling in <laughs> and that only took you know two years and then eddie murphy's like oh two years huh you know, like i just the super talented uh he was great in baskets uh, just a great guy. You know, a really quick Louis Anderson story. Um, he w- Louis Anderson was a homosexual, and he had uh, sex with a man in a hotel room. And a guy said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the press with this. I'm gonna tell everybody, uh, unless you give me a million dollars." And Louis's like, "Don't care. Like, go, I'm, you go ahead and tell whoever you want. You're not getting a dime from me." And that's how Louis Anderson. Uh, he, he just. He wasn't he Louis Anderson did whatever Louis Anderson wanted to do and I respect that big time. Uh yeah, I didn't mean to overshadow his loss. We've lost so much this year, so many great people. You know, we've lost Norm McDonald, Bob Saget, Meatloaf, Louis Anderson. I watched uh, uh coming to the number two America, and oh, I was yeah. so happy to see Louis in the sequel. Um and yeah, it, just, it, it and they always go in pairs, man. Even back when um, Johnny Cash died, the same day he died, John Ritter died. It's just weird how we lose two at a time. Norm and Bob so close together. Uh, John, but yeah, Louis, Louis Anderson. Ritter. Yeah, Louis Anderson was great. I don't think there's anything I've ever seen him in where I was like, eh, I don't like it. You know, even even whenever he was a host of Family Feud, he was hilarious. He he definitely <clears throat> Louis did a lot with with uh, very little opportunity. Like he did, they didn't like. It's not like Louis had a bunch of opportunities to star in a bunch of comedy films and stuff. It's like whatever they gave him, he just knocked it out of the park. And you got to respect somebody that he owned like his his shtick. He was great. Nobody else was like him. Nobody. No, mm-hmm. and also he didn't. I mean, to be honest, man, to, I used to weigh 358 pounds, uh, for, and he was a very big man. Louis was a large man, and to be successful in Hollywood at that size and to never really, like, try to lose weight or not – maybe he did try to lose weight. I don't know. But to never really – he never tried to fit himself into that Hollywood box. He was successful just based on who he was, and that's pretty rare. Yeah. That should be applauded big time. That's a big – that's a – yeah, that's really cool. I think that's really cool. His life is like a um like a really good example of like be true to yourself and good things will happen. He seriously was the genuine article. I mean, he had his biggest success dressing playing a character dressing up in a dress and wearing a wig, like baskets. Like that was one of his like he 
he became more famous and more critically acclaimed later on in his career. He got better. I thought for a while Master Evil was Louis Anderson in disguise. <laughs> uh, you know, now I know that's not true. Yeah, because he, you know, uh, Master Anderson. Evil's still around. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. I wish it was Louis. I I wouldn't have minded it so much. I kind of hate Master Evil if we're going to be honest about it. It's crazy that he even lets us have this show outside of the riffs. Shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, should we get into some a uh, couple sports? Your favorite your favorite segment? Let's get into a couple sports headlines real quick. Oh, yeah. I even set up a special background just for sports here. Uh, no, I didn't. Go ahead. What is it? Just flames like hell? <laughs> so for you. It's just the same thing. <laughs> Somebody in hell. Um, all right. I just light up a cigarette and, and nod my head. All right. Cute. This is a big time sports story. Very important. Former Bengals all time great wide receiver Chad Ochocinco was quoted as saying, I took Viagra before every game and people thought they'd stop me. And this is his quote How are you going to stop me running on three, three legs every Sunday? That's a good point. Yeah. What do you think about that? Was it, did you think that's a performance enhancer that he was running around the field with a boner or what? It's only performance enhancing if he's the guy that broke the record for blowing that load. I, yeah, I think it would be harder to play football with an erection. I, you're trying to run these routes. You got those tight football pants on. What if you fall down and get tackled and you land on your penis? And <laughs> what that would that penalty be called? And how many yards would you lose? Roughing the penis, uh, 15 yards on the defense 15 inches yeah f- three inches sideways because your dick's going to be crooked his poor urethra if you landed the, the incorrect way he'd be like johnny knoxville when he uh broke his dick in that jackass stunt did you ever hear about that Ugh, no no yeah johnny knoxville like broke his urethra in a stunt and he had to pee into a bag for three years or something like that I'm surprised that none of them killed themselves making the new Jackass movie. It's coming out. They're like in their fifties. Oh man! Well, that's why they brought in a bunch of new blood. They, have you noticed that there's a lot of new younger people mixed yeah. in with the older guys? Yeah, the older guys like Preston Lacey and Danger Aaron and stuff. Um, it's just like you know we get older and we age and everything, but it's just they they tend to not put out a movie. For like, they'll go like ten years without putting a sequel out. That's just kind of what they do. And like, in between Jackass Three and Jackass Forever, which is the new film, they've aged a lot. I mean, they're all in their fifties now. I mean, Bam looks like Phil, his dad. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Knoxville doesn't dye his hair anymore. Uh, Stevo, Stevo's kind of reverse aging. Stevo's the only so, one. And he's sober and clean now. It's like, yeah. dude, not only are you sober and clean. You're older. Be careful doing this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, at least before you had drugs. Yeah, now you're you doing it nothing. straight up sober. You're going to feel everything, pal. Did you ever watch Dr. Steve-O? It was on for like one season. It came on after Raw in the early 2000s. Did it have Steve-O in it? Yeah, it was Dr. Steve-O. He would like dress up as a doctor and go and help like nerdy guys become manly. No, Look at I'm sorry. Watch sorry, it. I missed that. It's actually pretty funny. But he was still on drugs for sure while he was doing that. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. Whatever happened to Johnny Knoxville acting, man? I thought he was a hell of an actor. I liked him <laughs> walking tall. I thought he was good. I thought Are he you was being a pretty serious? Actor. That's not a punchline setup? No, I, I thought he did pretty good acting. I, I, th- think, I liked him in Dukes of Hazard. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I think The Ringer happened. I think uh, that's, yeah, 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 okay. He, like, joins the Special Olympics to, like – win all the events like yeah. he, he rigged the special i think that's what happened okay that, that um, is bad grandpa though i think was a huge hit but that was kind of in the same vein as jackass it was made by the same guys I like, that movie was and stuff. I like borat and bruno and stuff i love the, how they intertwine the comedy fiction shit with real pranks mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sasha pulls while he's doing it like catching rudolph giuliani reaching down his pants on a hotel bed with a 15 year old girl in the room. And, uh, he's like, I was, I was tucking my shirt in, I was tucking my shirt in. Okay. Um, I, uh, Chris Hansen was about to walk in, I think on that one. Oh, you know, it'd be the greatest thing ever. Chris Hansen got caught 
doing some weird stuff. Yeah, I think that would like, just be the greatest thing ever. Like like all these years on the show, he's been taking notes, trying to come up with the perfect, you know, the perfect crime and how to get away yeah. with it. He yeah. just, dude, Chris Hansen just comes across as just a smug son. Like, I am in no way rooting for the bad guys in those episodes. Yeah, yeah, but, no, yeah. but Chris Hansen, why don't you just come in and take a seat? Take a seat. Some hey, why don't you sit down right there? He just comes across as just such a, like a smug, self-entitled kind of, but at the same time, he's got some major balls because to go into a situation like where, you know, these are bad guys and yeah. to like, kind of try to take control of the room in a situation where these guys probably feel very uh, antsy and on a hedge because they're caught. Yeah. Takes some guts to do that. So, you know, at the same time, I'm going to give Chris Hansen some props, but overall seems a little douchey. <laughs> Yeah, he, I'm surprised he's never been punched or anything. Or at least, he might have. We just don't know. But in the same vein as that, I want to give a shout-out to a YouTube channel. Uh, you should check him out, too. It's pretty fun. It's called DAP, Dads Against Predators. And they, yeah. do, the, they do the same thing that Chris does, except they like get the people in public, and they give them a chance to either talk about it with them and answer some questions, or they'll just be like, attention, everybody. This man's here to meet a 12-year-old girl. His oh name is such and such. God. And they, they always turn him over to the police afterwards, you know, turn in the chat logs and everything. Uh, but, you know, they've had over like 160 or 70 catches so far. It's it's really good, you know, that they're out there doing that. Um, yeah, no, it is. Absolutely. I That's ridiculous that that's even a thing. But, yeah, you know. It is. It's crazy. Um, As a dad, I would kill somebody. I, I would like to catch predators that way like they do, but I'm afraid that I would like literally uh, kill somebody uh, for for wanting to do that. So They should uh, have a crossover to catch a predator uh, TV show film and have Arnold Schwarzenegger be in it to catch a go. predator. Yeah, to catch a predator, but he's not actually going for the alien, the predator. He's just going for pedos. <laughs> yeah, me and my wife even had a perfect Covered in mud, stuff. walks into the living room. Me and my wife had a whole setup if I did it, you know, slasher librarian against predators and pedophiles. And, you know, when I get there, I slap them, S-L-A-P-P, just slap your ass. You got caught. Uh, but I'm afraid that I would, uh, I'm afraid I'd hurt somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't know, man. Well, since that's such a great, wonderful topic, uh, let's move on to another, uh, actually the last, the second and last Slash Tracks News Sports Story of the Night. And I know this is your favorite part of the episode because we're almost through the sports, Josh. Yeah, there you go. All right. Bob Gibson, if for all you guys who don't know who he was, super amazing, super talented, uh, world-class, all-time great pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Gibson, Hall of Famer, phenomenal athlete, okay? He just recently passed away, by the way. Oh, uh, please. Bob Gibson... Uh, the for the last pitch he ever threw in his career was hit for a grand slam by a guy named Pete LeCook. Okay, so last pitch this Hall of Fame pitcher, legend ever threw in his career, gives up a grand slam to this guy named Pete LeCook. All right? Mm-hmm. Decades later, there was an old-timers game, right? Old, they bring back, like, Bob Gibson's, like, 60. Pete LeCook's, like, 60. They bring all these guys in. They're trying to raise money for a good cause. So they bring these guys in, these former legends, to raise money in an old-timers game. Well, the first batter that Bob Gibson faces in the old-timers game two decades later is Pete LeCook. Well, the very first pitch Bob Gibson throws is immediately drilling Pete LeCook in the side with a fastball. In a sense, paying the guy back two decades later for hitting a grand slam off him the very very last pitch of his career. I just thought that was just hilarious. Oopsie, oopsie, yeah. my sorry bad. About that. Yeah, sorry about that. My bad, you know. Nice to see you again, Pete, you son of a bitch. Thanks for ending my Hall of Fame career on such a shit note. I just thought that was funny. Uh, Making me laugh, I show my age. All my, all my, all my wrinkles show up. Stop it, no laughing. Dude. Speaking of showing your age, man, I, I like now that I don't have my full beard right now, I can see the lines. Uh, on my face it's like i'm starting they're really starting to like become defined and uh i don't like it so we might have to get a little botox hopefully slash tracks news takes off so we can afford some of that botox some of that good bow bow yeah look at all that look at all that silver lining showing up in the mm. there man I'm, we, we the need some, yeah we need some work <laughs> i think 
All right, man. Let's get into some. Uh, let's get into the last uh, segments of the night. Let's get into some headlines. Okay, headlines. I'm gonna. Uh, wait, did you say headlines? News headline. What's that? We're get. We're gonna get some headlines. Is that what you said? We're gonna get some headlines. Oh, headlines. Okay. Yeah. That's say I didn't want to be. I didn't want to have headlines. So headlines was kind of like the children's lottery when you're a kid because it's like. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Like, you know, anything to get out of school for me was okay. So if they're checking you for scoliosis and you happen to have an irregular, you know, a regular curvature of your spine, that's fine. I get to go home. It's great. Scoliosis, I can deal with it. I get to go home. If I got head lice, jackpot, baby. I'm going home, dude. I'm going home for at least a couple days. So, you know, there's a sil- <laughs> yeah, well, there's a silver lining to everything. All right. But talking so, about my hair. Oh, silver lining. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, all right. So, first headline of the night: the WWE held their second most, uh, probably second most popular pay per view uh, two weekends ago. SummerSlam. <clears throat> no. So uh, the I'm... Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Oh, okay. Yeah, they held the Royal Rumble, and as a surprise entrant, uh, Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon's son, was actually a surprise entrant. Uh, he came into the Royal Rumble, and he actually finished in the final four of the Royal Rumble, right? Wow. So he's he's one of the final four guys vying for a chance to challenge the champion at WrestleMania, right? A 53-year-old oh, Shane that. McMahon. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think he's a hell of a worker. He's okay. He's all right. But uh, also in the final four, uh, Bad Bunny, the hip-hop superstar, was in the final four. Bad Bunny, right? Okay. Yeah, it's getting ridiculous. But anyway, well, he fired everybody, so then they ran out of people to put in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, they they had Johnny Ace call everybody and relieve them, get their future endeavors over the phone. So they had nobody to fill the thirty men. Um, what happened though? Apparently, you know. Okay, you know how well, you said that they fired everybody. You would think that. There's a certain like nobody's above being fired by WWE or Vince McMahon, and you and, and but you think Vince, you think Shane would have a pretty good chance, you know, being Vince's son, that he wouldn't be fired. Yeah, Shane McMahon was fired from the WWE this week. Holy shit! What about Triple H? Is he still is Triple he still H? Has, job? Triple H has not been on camera or had anything to do with the actual product since his uh, heart attack, but. Yeah. Yeah. They've completely switched. He is not in control of NXT anymore. He he had basically has no uh, visual uh, role like on camera on TV. So Vin, so Triple H has been, basically been neutered. They've taken all all the people that he hired or that he had surrounded himself with uh, have been let go or fired, except for Shawn Michaels because Vince and Shawn have a relationship regardless of Triple H. Yeah. So Triple H has been completely you know neutered and t- whatever. But Shane McMahon, Vince's own son, was basically fired. He wasn't, like, actually fired, but they had plans for him for WrestleMania to wrestle Seth Rollins. Yeah. They had plans for him at Elimination Chamber, all these other things. Oh, well, they just saved him, man. If they, if they, if he was going to wrestle Seth Rollins and got fired, yeah. that's actually good because if not, here in a couple months, we'd be reading about how uh, he was paralyzed. Or had you got a, a buckle neck. bob or the curb stop that went wrong. Because Seth Rollins is the worst at injuring people. That dude has no business in a wrestling ring. He doesn't take care of his opponent. And in wrestling, you take care of the person you're wrestling over yourself. That's what your job is. You protect your opponent. And Seth Rollins, I got zero respect for that piece of shit. So, yeah. Well, um, so how do you feel about Nia Jax then? She's hurt people too. So, oh, dude, she's worse than Seth Rollins. She's, you know, inadvertently she was uh, responsible for Becky Lynch having like her taking off point for his for her career when she hit Becky Lynch in the face and Becky was bleeding all over the place and concussed. That was like the moment where she like became the man. I think the chick that hurt Paige, I can't remember her name, and I call her a chick because what she did was petty and on purpose. I cannot remember her name for the life of me. But I know who it is. It's, she's um, Sasha, Sasha Banks. Yeah, apparently she was really jealous of Paige's push, and then all of a sudden, accidentally injured Paige. And Paige had a very promising 
uh, career. I think she's going to do some stuff with AEW, though. So that'll be pretty cool. Paige is still under contract, though, with WWE, man. I th- but I'm saying I think that if, if she ever got into it, like was able to wrestle, wrestle again, it would be with AEW. Uh, One of the, the doctors will let her in WWE. Like Sting, they, WWE won't let him wrestle, but AEW is like, yeah, go on in there, old man. You know? no, no, no problem. You you could just be in a tag team. You won't have to do much of the heavy lifting. Yeah, that's what I would do if I wrestled again, just be in a tag match. So I didn't have to bump too much um, with the back injury. But uh, but no, who won the Royal Rumble? Brock Lesnar. Never mind. Well, you know what? So what had happened? What had happened was Brock Lesnar was the champion and he lost his title to Bobby Lashley earlier in the show. So Brock Lesnar entered the Royal Rumble, I believe, at number 30 as a surprise entrant. But so that's cool. That's, a, that, you know, that's great. Whatever. Get, get a nice little pop from the crowd because you're not expecting him to be in the Royal Rumble because he was just in the title match. So he's going to the main event regardless of WrestleMania. But it makes no sense to me. And I'll tell you why. Why would Brock Lesnar, he would have already had to have been, uh, if, it, if we're trying to suspend belief, right, that it's not pre-planned. He would have had already been entered into the Royal Rumble as the champion. So why would he do that when he Just is the sense. champion? Right? It makes Just no sense. Hogan, they didn't, he, Hogan they didn't explain won it. Royal Rumble as champion. Well, yeah, but that was back when there was no stipulation. It was just the Royal Rumble. There no winner. It had nothing to do with the winner going to WrestleMania. Nothing at all. It was a pay per view just for the sake of having a pay per view. May, and may, I think, nothing. I think WWE's done unless they can come up with a talent pool even halfway as good as what they had in the late 90s, early 2000s. I just don't see it. I just have no interest in it, and I see their ratings are not even half of what they were, you know, back in back in those days. I just I just don't think people are... They, wrestling needs a shot in the arm, and what I've seen with the AEW is at least giving people an option better than TNA or Impact or whatever the fuck it is. They, so um... I'm kind of rooting for AEW. WWE, I know, I I totally agree with everything you just said. WWE product sucks, and it's the worst I've ever seen in my life. I only watched the Royal Rumble because it it, it was free on Peacock, and I have the app, so I was like, oh, I'll watch this, whatever. But um, I love the old stuff on the network. I love watching. Yeah, the old stuff. me me too. I I love the eighties, nineties, early two thousands. I love all that stuff. Um, but WWE, believe it or not, just had their most profitable year ever. Of all I just, time. I just can't believe that. <laughs> it's because, it's because that. of Peacock. It's because they sold oh, they sold okay. the streaming platform to Peacock. They've been letting go talent left and right, so they've been cutting budgets, so they're they've got all these money they, they to be a valuable company, I guess you have to have uh, cash on hand or what cat whatever. I don't know what it's called, but cash positive, cash flow positive. And they're very cash flow positive right now. Um and on top of that <laughs> They hadn't been traveling a bunch, so they were making all their money from, like, you know, streaming and all this other crap. Back in the day, you had to make money by touring and doing shows and and actually having a decent product that people wanted to watch. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. Um, But so it's it's really um, it's like, yeah, we made all this money. Blah. blah, Things are great. But it's really kind of misleading because if you actually dive deep into it, the product sucks. It's I just horrible to it. And Brock Lesnar, man. It's like every now and then he comes back and just runs. He like he he beats uh, what's his name? Oh my god, the New Day guy. Why can't I think of his name right now? Oh, Biggie Langston. No, Big, Kofi. Yeah, Kofi. Kofi Kingston. Whenever Kofi was the champion, finally they give the guy that deserves the belt the belt, and then he just gets demolished by Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. You know, and I'm sure Goldberg's going to come back at least once or twice this year and wrestle hey, somebody. Hey, uh, I don't want to burst your bubble, but Gold- Goldberg just challenged Roman Reigns. Uh, for yeah. the WWE. Out of nowhere, by the way. Dude, yeah, he just showed up to cash in his money in the Goldberg contract. Exactly. That, that's, and that's I don't all know that... why. Hey, why would Goldberg be the number one contender when he hasn't wrestled in over a year? He, why does yeah. he all of a sudden just get to call a title shot? And that's the thing with WWE. I, I don't even watch it really, but it's like Brock Lesnar shows up, runs, you know, rough shot over the company. And then every now and then Goldberg pops in, you know, and then WrestleMania, you'll have like Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold come out and say something. 
and that's it. That's that's the year in WWE. And in between, they just have all these guys that wrestle with their actual names. There's no characters anymore. There's no story anymore. The female division is kicking the male division's ass in entertainment and just, talent. Dude, the last just, the last great wrestler they had was Bray Wyatt and Curtis Axel. Those two guys had star potential, and they needed at least like a dozen more guys like them. And I think that it could have been as good as it used to be, but it's just I don't know. It's just tapered off, you know. You had the Randy Ortons and the Sheamuses and stuff, and then it got watered down a little bit more. You had Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. Uh, yeah. There's, Anyways, there's, the there's, Shield was interesting. There's two. Th- okay. There's two things that ruined the WWE. The first was WCW going out of business. That was mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Once you don't have competition, you're not forced to elevate your game. It's just, it's a tale as old as time. Slowly but surely, the product eroded. Number two, and this is the most important one, when WWE went public and became a publicly traded company and they had to answer to stockholders, that was it. That's why they went PG. That's why they weren't able to do a lot of their uh, their better storylines. That's why they weren't able to do a lot of more of their better matches. They lost uh, to me around 2010, around the time that John Michaels retired. That's right, dude. That's right around the time they went public it was like 2002, 2003, something like that. When the when the that when the F was taken out of WWF. Oh no, they lost me in 2010. Like I stuck with them through 2010. Really? But you know, when Shawn Michaels left and stuff, I just didn't. I just didn't like the next class. You know, I liked Randy Orton, but I didn't <laughs> the next, like the Sheamuses. The, the next class. You're like once Screech and and Slater were gone, <laughs> I was out. Once, once Zach and Kelly and yeah, Jesse were gone, I was done. I wasn't <laughs> in for the new class. No way. Like, I didn't okay. like Seamus, the Amer- All-American American, whatever his name was. And Jack Swagger? Yeah, like, people like that. It just, just didn't nope. do Santina Morella. Nobody like, liked uh, Jack Swagger. That's why, that's why he didn't work out. He's in AEW now. I can't believe I like The Miz. For the longest time, I hated that motherfucker. But he's actually a hell of a worker that cares about about the fucking business yeah and he's really good on the mic he he like um the miz definitely uh gives 100 percent. i respect that a lot he's he, he's he's earned everything that he's yeah he, he was he, not liked in the locker room and he's earned every opportunity he's got him, him and john cena earned my respect i used to hate both of them um but uh AEW talk anytime i see chris jericho with the belt over his shoulder yeah. All I can think about is that guy back in the day bitching about the old guys not giving the young guys the opportunities, you know? And here he is, what is he, like 52, you know? And he comes Jericho, out with the <laughs> Dude, he's completely, like, him being the lead singer of that band Fozzie and, like, the Chris Jericho cruise tour and, like, all this other stuff he's got going on. He, like, He's he's fit, right? For like a fifty-two or fifty-three year old guy, he's fit. Like he's not fat. Yeah. But yeah. for being a professional wrestler and uh <clears throat> you know, being at that high of a level and being on TV every week and being one of the main eventers, he definitely could be in better shape. He yeah. he it, he does not look like he's as committed to his fitness as he used to be. And it shows and he blows up in the ring very fast. He can't do He's still trying to do lion tamers and moonsaults and stuff. I just want to see him practice what he preached. You know, he wanted back in the day, he wanted the old guys to, you know, to pass it to the younger guys. And he's he's still there at the older, older than Hogan and Nash and Hall. And then were back in WCW, mind you, older. They were in their mid forties. He's older than that. Still trying to take it from the younger guys. So, and the hair, like, the hair being super like it, his look doesn't I at a certain point it's like even Shawn Michaels cut his hair it's like I'm not telling him to do one thing or the other but it's just like he might look a little better a little healthier with like a shorter kind of yeah buzz and I'm cut. A Jericho-holic. I, lo- I like Jericho Jer- hey I, just, I want him to practice writing what he preaches that's all that's all Chris Jericho is one of the all-time great talents ever but at at, at a certain great point author. Hey, author. at a certain point all the greats eventually aren't great anymore. And it's, and then they transition into something else. Yeah. You're probably right. Pro, well, he's an amazing podcaster. He, he has a great show. 
I love his autobiographies. Hey, and Chris Jericho, if you're listening, what you did for the Owen Hart family with Martha and Oge and Athena, yes, that that was amazing that you were able to 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 make such a positive thing happen with AEW to where they could honor Owen Hart and. That's amazing. So thank you very much. And also one other thing, since we were trashing Jericho, another great thing that Don't Jericho was, I'm just saying that there's always two sides of every coin. One thing, Chris Jericho, that I've always read about and I've always heard about whenever anyone passed away, like when, when, when Chris Benoit did the thing, the horrible thing to his family, Jericho reached out to Benoit's family. He was one of the only people to do that. And I learned that from uh, Dark Side of the Ring. I also knew that when Chris Jericho, when Owen Hart passed away, Jericho offered a lot of money to Martha to help with the with everything when Owen passed. And Jericho at that time was not a main eventer. That that would have been a lot of money for Jericho yeah. to give to to his family. And just so Jericho's a very a stand up guy when it comes he's to that. Goat, man. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best. He's one of the best. Yeah. Um so what do you got? For? What's our last thing here? That's okay. Well, I got two more headlines, and then we'll wrap the show up. Okay. Um, so Jeff Bezos, Amazon founder, you know Jeff Bezos, <laughs> billionaire. Uh, he's actually going to have to have a Dutch bridge dismantled. A 1927 historic Dutch bridge needs to be dismantled because his 500 million dollar super yacht can't pass underneath it. So the Dutch are going to have to dismantle a, a historic bridge to allow Mr. Bezos' uh, multi-multi-million dollar yacht to pass. His new yacht is is extremely enormous, and uh, it won't be able to sail uh, out to sea unless a Dutch city actually demolishes their historic bridge that has stood the test of time since 1927. What are your thoughts on this? Exactly. Fuck exactly. him. Fuck Jeff Bezos. He just destroyed a Dutch oven recently, too. His what? wife is behind it. Why? Why? Okay. Is he going to pay this city to do this? Right? He's going to have... I don't even understand how they would have to do this if he's not going to pay them for this bridge. What's exactly. the situation fuck, here? Fuck it. I don't know. It just sounds like a the rich and powerful doing whatever the fuck they want. I tell you, man, the wealth distribution in this world is is ridiculous. It's like taking a hundred people with a hundred dollars, giving one person ninety nine dollars, and the rest of them have to split that remaining dollar. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. It's just it's ridiculous. Some people just have way too much fucking money. And and think about money, man. Think about this for a second, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your blow your mind here for a second. Maybe. The whole point of money and the value and worth of money is all because one day long ago a guy dug up a shiny rock and said, look at this shiny rock. It's valuable because it's shiny and pretty, you know, and that was a silver one. And then somebody dug up another rock and said, Oh, but look at this rock. It's even shinier and prettier. And that was a gold. That was gold. We, our entire wealth system is based on people that dug up shiny rocks so long ago. It's, it's what it, it's people have, some people have shiny, a lot of shiny rocks. Some people don't have as many. Well, I was, I was always thought it was interesting that like, <clears throat> you know, all this, all the goods and all the things that exist in the world, you know, think about everything that exists, TVs, laptops, cars, whatever. Those things would still be possible, right? Without currency. Yeah. It's we, all shiny rocks. We yeah. would be able to manufacture and produce all these things without a form of currency. Right, we invented currency. We invented value. We said yeah, this all... rock is valuable. This rock is valuable. Yeah, that it's is all literally it. <laughs> it's arbitrary, and all these terrible things—murders, people being held down, uh, just systemic—all these terrible things. It's conditioning. We've been conditioned to just accept the way things are because people hundreds and thousands of years ago said so. And uh, I guess that's how society state. That's the glue of society is conditioning and brainwashing, and you know just acceptance. Because it really, at the end of the day, the biggest billionaire in the world is just the guy that has the most shiny rocks, and that's sad. That's just sad to me. You know that five hundred million dollars. Okay, so just wrap your mind around this. 
five hundred million dollars for this yacht and whatever he's going to pay the Dutch city to take to take their nineteen twenty seven historical landmark bridge down so he can pass his super yacht underneath it. How much money? How many people could he feed in the world with five five hundred million dollars? Exactly. Instead of having this stupid boat, how many lives he could change by just being a decent human being? Makes me sick. It literally it's horrible. Makes me sick. Isn't that horrible? That's yep. just that's horrible. Um, you, well, so we're not going to end the show on that horrible note. We're going to end it on a good note. And this is the last story. And this story is amazing. Uh, Mark Hamill played Luke Skywalker. Does the voice of the Joker? He's the, the voice Joker. Joker. The very best Joker. I He's a great say, Joker. Every, everybody says it's like no Joker you've ever heard before. It's the best. Very big knee. Very big knee. Mark Hamill did the voice of Skeletor in the new Netflix uh, Masters of the Universe. Mark Hamill's an amazing he he's an amazing follow on Twitter. So if, if you don't have him on Twitter, you should follow him. He posts some really funny stuff. Oh, um, great. Oh, and here's here's real real quick 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 fact about Mark Hamill. Apparently, um, Robert England was the one who referred Mark Hamill to audition for Star Wars. I told you that story one time. Yeah, yeah. he was so on his couch. Yeah. yeah, so there's a there's a quick uh, Mark Hamill there, and that's related to the horror genre or whatever. So anyway, Mark Hamill's agent called him about a terminally ill boy who wanted to meet Luke Skywalker. Oh. So Hamill returned the call to his agent within 90 seconds, according to his agent, right? And uh, Mark Hamill got the address of the little boy, found out where he was. He went immediately to the boy's bedside. And spent the entire day in character as Luke Skywalker and answered any and every question the little boy had about the Star Wars universe, about Luke Skywalker himself. And when they asked Mark Hamill why he did it, he was quoted as saying, I just wish I could have done more. End quote. That's amazing. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's amazing. I, there's nothing I can even add to that. He's an amazing person. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, "That's that is just that is what it's all about." That is. That's the that is, that is be that person. Everybody, be that. When yeah. I say be excellent to each other, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. That is. Don't be Jeff Bezos. Don't be the guy in the Slash Tracks episodes uh, talking shit. Uh, be Mark Hamill. If there's someone that needs help and you can do it, and it's not going to cost you anything. Why are why why won't you do it? If we all do it, it, it would be the rise of the Skywalker man. Just do it. Be a Skywalker. Mm-hmm. That was incredible. Yeah, yeah do it. Josh, you got anything else, man? For before we end the show, man, I can't. Uh, you know, love you, Louie. Love you, Meatloaf. Um, yeah, man, love you, Mark Hamill. That was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's all I got. Be excellent to each other, guys. Seriously, that's the only way things are going to get better is if we make them better. So, absolutely. Hey, mahalo. Mahalo, dog. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex.